guys, today is a case over a boy who was 17 years old when he went to s missing, um, disappeared from his home in St. George, Utah on the morning of September 1st, 2015. His name is Mason Smith. He stands about six foot four and about 200 pounds. He has blonde hair and blue eyes and he had a little bit of a rough childhood growing up. He was bullied in junior high because as a child he had a little bit of a delayed speech. It took him a little bit longer to learn how to talk than most toddlers, babies learn to talk. So he in turn had a little bit of an effect as an adult with a small, a small speech impediment. It really was kind of hard to notice unless you knew that thing about Mason. And another a uh, unique detail about him is his name is spelled M-A-C-I-N. So Mason Smith, blonde hair, blue eyes, six foot four, was thought to have headed off to school around 7.40 a.m. His parents heard the garage door between 7.30 and 7.40 close and that's when they assumed that he was going to school. This was a normal routine for his parents. They would normally just wake Mason up, go to, go back to bed, listen for him to leave to school, and he would leave for school. They normally didn't get up with him because they had a later start to work than what he had to school. And Mason at the time actually didn't drive. It was something that he was a little bit afraid of, a little bit intimidated by. He was a really timid, shy person to begin with who, like I said, struggled with bullying, struggled with depression. Um, he had actually had one suicide attempt like two years prior to his disappearance and he had to go to the hospital, get his stomach pumped, and that was probably traumatic for him to go through as well as, you know, he wasn't very popular and he had actually just moved to Utah from Canada and it was his senior year. So it was his first year going to this school but his last year of high school and I could just imagine how nerve wracking that would be, especially relating to my own stories of just switching from school to school to school all the time, being the new kid is definitely not something you want to do. And the first time you're a new kid is uh, just definitely, you know you're the new kid, everyone knows you're the new kid. It's, you can't really hide from that spotlight, especially if it's a small town. So the morning of the day of his disappearance at 7.40, his father actually woke up in the middle of the night to a blue light coming from his room, which he then in turn realized was Mason's laptop and Mason was really addicted to anime. He loved watching anime, he loved playing video games, he loved watching YouTube and he occasionally would bake and those are just like some little tidbits and facts about his personality that I found. Um, so his father seen this blue light coming from the room and it was like 1 30 in the morning and he had school the next day and this was something that they had struggled with Mason for a while because he was so antisocial. Um, he would spend a lot of the time on his on the internet and his parents didn't want him to spend too much time to where he didn't get sleep or enough sleep so his dad actually went in there confiscated his laptop his phone and Mason didn't really you know fight or argue with his dad he just kind of gave up his belongings and went on his way so back to sleep I, I assume so Around 1.30 a.m., his father confiscated the laptop. Around 7.40 a.m. is when they heard the garage door close, and that is actually the last time his parents or anyone that knows him has for sure ever seen Mason. Um, there's a couple clues and a couple little bits of evidence that have come up, but nothing super lead-worthy, like nothing to investigate as much as I wish there was things to investigate on. So one of the things that they found is after they searched his laptop and his phone, they actually literally found absolutely nothing. And the other like weird circumstance is that Mason's door was locked. So Mason never locked his door. His mom said this is actually the first time he ever has locked his door. The only time he's ever locked his door is when he disappeared, like the day that he disappeared. So my theory is that he wanted to keep as much time as he could before his parents invaded in his privacy and into his room on the day that he disappeared if he did this on purpose. Um, so another bit of evidence they found is that a local churchgoer that led the, that like was in the youth group or in the church that Mason and his family attended had specifically seen Mason and this isn't 
a confirmed sighting, but at the same time, his family does believe her because they did go to church with her. So she is said to have witnessed him walking away from his house around 3.15 p.m. This is extremely odd because actually he was the youngest of six children and all of the other children had already left the home and he was so he was like an only child but at the same time he did have six siblings. His mother received a phone call from his stepdad saying that he didn't get home from school and his mom was at work until about 6.30 p.m. when she came home, realized he still wasn't home. By 10 p.m. he wasn't home by his curfew. This raised a lot of red flags so they called the police and reported him as missing. Especially because between 6 and 10 p.m. his mother received an email saying that he actually never showed up at school. So for him to never show up at school and leave the house at 7.40 a.m. but be seen by someone at 3.15 means that he might have been in town. Like he might have purposely left and not gone to school, but that means that he was walking around town kind of contemplating what he might do, what he would do, um, things of that nature. So it's speculated no one really knows for sure if she did actually see him it's just the family does believe that she probably did so I kind of also believe because I feel like as a as like a family if I lost someone the only details I would give out are ones that are important and that I truly believed as I knew that person specifically and intently so mother and the family and everyone searched for weeks in the early weeks of the investigation it was thought to be a missing person case um, then she had actually gotten into his room and seen that he hadn't taken his backpack, any of his textbooks, his phone, his laptop. Obviously they had been confiscated so they didn't have any data or location on where he might be because phones will GPS and if you turn them off they stop GPSing but normally you can track someone's location up until then especially if you're a police worker. So for the first few weeks police actually ruled this to be a suicide and the reason being is because his mother found tucked away in the back of his dresser underneath all of his clothes his wallet and at first they found this wallet they searched it they searched it and nothing came of it but then they actually like really looked in the wallet and they realized that there was a note and it was a three page note um, the contents of this letter note have not been released to the public the family did not feel that it was appropriate to do so because this spilled very internal feelings of Mason's and if Mason is still alive and possibly hiding from his family, they didn't want Mason to have a reason to hold a grudge against them or to be upset with them or to feel embarrassed because he expressed his feelings. The only two words that his mother released from this letter or note was the words, I'm done. So Mason's family, mother specifically, truly believed since he had been struggling with depression, he'd already had a suicide attempt, that his intentions and his intent of writing this note was to harm himself. The note had a lot of animosity towards his parents about taking his electronics because that was his one outlet and had a lot of animosity and confusion just about his life and all like all his relationships with the people around him. So this was super alarming but at the same time it hasn't been released to public so we can't really speculate as well as we could. However, I do understand the reasoning for them not releasing the note. Um, his mother actually believes that he may still be alive, but at the same time, they also believe that this note was intended to say goodbye to his loved ones. And there had been multiple sightings in California, New Nevada, um, Oregon, Washington, and Mexico. But most of the sightings have always come and stemmed from California. And this is like a super important piece of evidence or, you know, a super important piece of knowledge and information because his parents, or I'm sorry, his mother and him and also him and a family friend had an in-depth conversation about him wanting to run away. And of course, both these people just kind of blew it off, like, oh yeah, I wish I could leave this life too, just leave it all behind, it'd be so much easier. But in these conversations, Mason had actually had very specific details on exactly what he wanted to do and where he wanted to go. He wanted to go to California and he wanted to be a beach bum, in his own words. He wanted to live um, and be homeless and he just wanted to spend his time by the beach and the water and the nature and just kind of do his own thing without anyone else's rules and at the age of 17 and 
moving and going through all of this teenage angst and you know it really could have pressured or pushed him to do this of course it's all speculation it's not fact no one really knows for sure what happened um his mother really thinks that he is still out there but at the same time there's no evidence no leads no nothing except for the multiple sightings that they've seen most of them haven't been confirmed like i said the family friend that went to church that's seen him i know the family believes that but i don't know if like the media and the police believe that just because they didn't know the family friend as well as the family knew the family friend and honestly there really isn't much more information on this case um, there's theories, obviously, that theorize that he is in California, where he's in a group of homeless people, where they don't really ask your identity, they just make sure that you do your part for the community and your part for this organization, and as long as you do, they don't really care because that's what everyone else is there for. They have very little media sources, so they don't really get on social media or look at news or watch TV because they're just living life off the land in in a lack of a better term but he had no money you know no phone no laptop he literally just left without everything and so in my mind I think this is his opportunity to leave but at the same time I don't know if his note was just a note or if it was a note like a suicide note like we can't say for sure that it was a suicide note because we don't know the contents of the letter his mom has conveyed it and interpreted it to be a suicide note but at the same time she is also unsure of whether he is alive or not and the fact that most suicide cases are found a mile and a half within their home people don't usually travel very far even if they don't want to be found um, they're usually in this state of mind that's very hectic and adrenaline run and they're just like they just go and they do it and they only get about a mile and a half away from the house that they lived in. Um, it had been searched extensively and they have never found a clue or any leads on his body or any of that. So I do think that's a possibility he's still out there. I do think he's in California. His parents don't want him to come home. They just want to know he's okay. Like their main focus and priority is that he's okay. So if you see someone that looks like Mason Smith, obviously I've included lots of photos in this video please, please, please report it to police. Um, report it to his mom, tell her on her Facebook page, like let her know, give them leads, give them evidence, give them information, give them something to go off of because this is going on, let's see, it happened in 2015, this is 2018. It became a three-year-old case September 1st. So he hasn't been missing that long and there's a possibility he is still alive. And if that is true, he is only 20 years old um, and probably very recognizable as to where a lot of the other people, there's a age progression photos that aren't extremely or completely accurate, and to have this boy leave home at 17, be six foot four, blonde hair, blue eyes, and just be like this quiet person that struggled in silence as most of the people that knew him described him as, I can't imagine that he would just leave and not, like him being so interested in anime and YouTube, I feel like he probably has gotten back on YouTube, obviously not his social media accounts because those can be easily tracked, but on YouTube you don't have to be tracked as long as you're not signed in, you can just watch it um, freely. So that is my theory is that he is still alive, he didn't commit suicide. If he had, I feel as though he would have done it, they would have found him, they would have found some kind of leads. There's been a couple little speculations to where someone said that they seen Mason holding a sign that said hitchhiking to Las Vegas and so his parents literally flew out to Las Vegas as soon as this um, lead came they searched Las Vegas they put flyers out handed flyers out and actually it was determined that the person hitchhiking wasn't actually Mason so obviously there isn't very many clues there isn't very many um, leads to go off of at this point in time in the case it is still an open case his parents have never been suspects obviously his dad was thought to be maybe a little bit of a person of interest just because he was the one who confiscated his laptop. He was the one that mainly had a problem with the outlets that Mason chose, which would be the internet at late times of night. So his mother just kind of like let him freely express himself and do this because she thought, you know, he doesn't have very many friends. He doesn't ever go out. He tried out for football. He tried out for basketball and he didn't fit in. So he had just given up on those things and he had turned his life around to the internet. And 
they searched his electronics for any kind of messages, like I had said, any kind of searches, but his internet history had actually been cleared the morning he disappeared at 12.30 a.m. <coughs> so is it possible that he heard his dad coming and he hurried up and erased all of his search details, his search history? Is that something he normally did? No one really knows. Of course, a lot of new technology has come out since then, even in the past three years, and they're actually trying to gain evidence from deleted history off of Mason's computer. You can actually like encrypt codes that have been broken or deleted. It takes a long time. It takes a couple different types of technology in order to get this. As far as I know, they did an update in 2017. I believe there was one update in 2018, but I think they were just a little late to the game. So in my opinion, you know, there could potentially be new evidence coming out soon. So I would keep your eyes peeled. I would keep your eyes on this case. I would follow with this case. I would research this case more if you're interested in, you know, more of the background and the life of his mother and his stepdad and how he grew up. Um, like I said, he was the youngest of six children that did no longer live at home. Um, his mother said that the relationship he had with his sister was so unbreakable and such a close bond that if he would tell anyone where he went or anyone that he was okay that it would most likely be his older sister so you know there's a lot of speculation because obviously he hasn't contacted his sister so it's really just like 50 50 on if he's alive or dead but i'm hoping and praying obviously that he is alive i'm hoping that we can bring him home or his parents can just kind of get some closure to let them know that he is okay and he's out there and that you know, this is the life that he wants to live and this is the life that he has chose. Obviously at this point in time he's eight, over 18 years old so he's a legal adult. He can do whatever he pleases and it just seems very odd. I don't really know if I believe the suicide. Of course I haven't read the note so I don't know if it was a suicide note but his family seems to be very caught on the idea that that is maybe how this story ended and how these circumstances ended. So. That's all I have for today's case, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that it intrigues you and you're interested. Give it a like if you like videos like this that are just super, like, kind of quick, give you the evidence, let you know what's going on so we can get these people's stories out there. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more stories regularly just to kind of get my view on all these different cases out there. If you guys want a more in-depth video on a certain case that I do, definitely let me know because there is tons of evidence in almost every case that I can cover, but nine times out of ten it's just like leads that lead to no no end and I don't feel like it's necessary to walk you guys through all that and give you like this suspense whenever it was confirmed that it wasn't true. A lot of people do that in their mystery videos, but I just don't think that it's necessary to like heighten your suspense. I know it's a good story and it's good to listen to and it's interesting and mysterious, but at the same time, my main reason for putting these videos, my main reason for researching these videos and putting these videos out there is because I want people to know. I want there to be more media exposure. I want people to be aware of these stories, even if it's just 267 subscribers because that's who subscribed to me and 60% of them don't watch me. Only 40% of my viewers are actual subscribers. I don't care. I just, I want these stories out there. I want to know that I'm making a difference, even if it's just two people that are informed. It's easier than going around and telling all my friends about this story. So I hope you guys enjoyed. You guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, bye.